today is Wordle. Uh, Welcome to the Kids World Podcast. Today, I am joined by my fellow co-host, Abbott. Hello. Okay, I was waiting for you to say something. And I am, of course, Josiah. I I think I've done a few episodes where I forgot to say my own name. And I'm curious if like kids have been confused that I'm Daniel this whole time. And they're like, his arm is magically better. And I've gotten a lot of that, too, in person as well. Your secret name is Daniel? <sighs> okay, no. Well... Anyways, I'd like to introduce my new guest, the weird, wacky, ridiculous, Reverend Caleb. Reverend Lord Caleb Reverend Lord Caleb Askew. A gentleman and a scholar, the first of his name. And you must have just found him in your backyard because you didn't go far for this guest. (laughs) Wow. But he will be asked, he will be helping us along in our understanding of weird, weird, wackiness. Ridiculous Bible stories. Okay, if that, you say so. That yes. is one of the craziest intros I have ever had. And uh, you know what? I like the sound of Reverend Caleb. That actually sounds very professional. You know what? I get called pastor more than you do, I think. A lot wow. of kids tell me that I'm their favorite I, pastor. You I know don't what? think so. I'm so happy for you. That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> but I am super excited to be here with all of you. Um, man, I've been watching the podcast, and this is just an awesome way for kids to dive into the word so i'm super excited to be here it really is so kids how you doing stay uh stay leaned in paying attention i hope your parents are watching too we're gonna have fun today uh it's gonna be goofy i hope you're ready for it and it's one might say it would be wacky weird and ridiculous speaking of ridiculous um (laughs) (laughs) i'm not actually referred to as pastor more than you are caleb oh okay that makes me feel good yeah, I was That's just so making nice. a joke. Anyway, you brought the guest. So then I brought the Bible story. The weird, so wacky, ridiculous Bible story. If you story. could turn your books of the Bibles. No, turn your Bible with the full of books and turn it to Jonah. Mm. It's kind of like a little past the middle. In this Bible, it is page 1,130. <laughs> it's probably different for everyone's Bible. Yeah, but our Bibles <clears> are probably the same. Are they? Uh, I think all of our Bibles are the same. Okay. Well, I'm going to read the whole first chapter, which sounds like it's a long, but it's not that long. All right. And this is... Take it away. It's going to be good. So you guys have probably heard this one before. So just bear with me, okay? The word of the Lord came to Jonah, son of Amittai. (laughs) Go to the great city of Nineveh and preach against it because its wickedness has come up before me. But Jonah ran away from the Lord and headed for Tarshish. He went down Joppa, where he found a ship, and bound for that port. After paying the fare, he went aboard and sailed to Tarshish to flee from the Lord. Then jo- or the, not Jonah. Then the Lord sent a great wind on the sea, and such a violent storm arose that the, sh- the ship threatened to break up. All the sh- sailors, <laughs> Tarshish, all the sailors were afraid, and each cried out to his own god when they threw the cargo into the sea to lighten the ship. But Jonah had gone below deck, where he could lay down and fell into a deep sleep. But then the captain came up to him and said, How can you sleep? Get up and call to your God. Maybe he will notice us so that we will not perish. Then the sailors said to each other, Come, let us cast lots to find out who is responsible for this calamity. So they cast lots, and the lot fell on Jonah. Because it was his fault, right? So they asked him, tell us who is responsible for making all of this trouble for us. What kind of work do you do? Where do you come from? What is your country? From what people are you? He answered, I am a Hebrew. I worship the Lord, the God of heaven, who made the sea and the dry land. This terrified them and they asked, what have you done? They knew he was running away from the Lord because he had already told them so. The sea was getting rougher and rougher. So they asked him, what should we do to make the sea calm down for us? 
Pick me up and throw me into the sea, he replied, and it will become calm. I know that it is my fault that this great storm has come upon you. Instead, the men did their best to row back to land, but they could not, for the sea grew even wilder than before. Then they cried out to the Lord, Please, Lord, do not let us die for taking this man's life. Do not hold us accountable for killing an innocent man, for you, Lord, have done as you pleased. Then they took Jonah and threw him overboard, and the raging sea grew calm. At this, the men greatly feared the Lord, and they offered a sacrifice to the Lord and made vows to him. Thoughts? What do you guys think? Mm. Well, I think Jonah is in a very interesting situation. This is definitely one weird, wacky, ridiculous story in the Bible. Um, <clears throat> Have you ever found yourself in a similar situation? Uh, in a spot maybe where I knew what I was supposed to do and just maybe didn't do that thing. No, I mean specifically when <clears throat> people like threw you off of a boat and then were like... <laughs> Uh, I don't think I've ever been in a spot where I've been thrown overboard. I've, I've one time been, I fell off a boat. I've been thrown off of a boat, but not a big one and not during a storm. Did, you, did a it kid, make a big splash? Yes. Yeah. When I was yeah. a kid, so I was on a speedboat, or not a speedboat, we were like fishing. It's a smaller boat, but I had like a decent sized motor on it, so that thing could rip, right? And we were in my dad's boat. Um, not very old at this time, maybe as old as some of you viewers, right? And then I like leaned back and I realized I didn't have a back to my seat because I thought I was sitting in the other seat <laughs> and I fell right off the back of the boat when we were going full speed down the lake. Well, you want to know something good? What? At least you just hit the water. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> yeah. But I had a life jacket on too, so I'm glad. But Yeah, I know uh, growing up, I had a, a huge lying problem. <clears throat> yeah. So yeah, I really struggled with lying. And it got to the point, you know, I knew I wasn't supposed to lie. I knew that, that, um, you know, I was supposed to tell the truth. I was supposed to be honest, but I just thought I was a good liar. Why? Uh, I have no idea. Cause I was a horrible liar. <laughs> I was a terrible liar and, but I had a lying <laughs> issue. So I'd lie about little things. Maybe you had an ego problem too. You <clears throat> think you're such a good liar. Maybe, maybe, maybe that's maybe. what it was. But, uh, no, I just had a problem with lying. And I remember that the consequences of that was that. Nobody would trust me. Well, why would they? My, yes, I always lied. I always, and so it's like, that was one thing where, you know, I knew I wasn't supposed to be lying, but um, I chose to do it anyways. And what happened? Well, I, nobody would trust me. And I look at Jonah's life and it's like, that's, Jonah knew what he had to do. Like, he was told pretty clearly. He yeah. was told very clearly by God. Like it says that you need to go to Nineveh and these people, they need to hear, um, that they're doing wrong. And, you know, Jonah just, he didn't like the people of Nineveh and he didn't want anything to do with them. And so he decided that he would rather run from God. And I, I don't know what he was thinking in his mind because he knew, like, you can't run from God. What a chucklehead. I know. What a what a chucklehead. I mean, you cannot run from God. <laughs> God is uh, everywhere. Yeah, yes, he is everywhere. But, like, Jonah right in this... There? In this spot, he is. He's right over there. He's with us in this podcast right now. He's That's sitting wonderful. right here, too. But Jonah, to home too. Jonah, like, he's this guy, okay, and he serves the Lord, but all of a sudden he does something, or God commands him to do something that he doesn't want to do, and he's tested. What, what are you going to do about that? And sure enough, he runs, and the result of him running away from God is being eaten by a fish. Me too. No, I'm just kidding. You know, like, I don't know if I've ever done something like that that's caused me to be eaten by a fish. But, like, that's what happens when we try to run from God. Right. Right? God wants to use us. He wants us to be a part of his plan. Um, and Even if it's against our will. Even no. if it's <laughs> <laughs> No, but, like, Jonah's in a spot now where he was like, dude, I don't want to deal with these Ninevites. They're mm -hmm. sinful people. And God basically told him, no, you're going to, you're going to Nineveh. You're going to tell the people about that. The fact that they're sinning, that they're doing wrong. Right. And it seems like in the boat, he realizes, you know what? There's no running from this. Like I know why the storm is happening. And he threw, he, he says, you know what? It's my fault. I'm running from God. You know what I find ironic is that he was not wanting to go to Nineveh for their sinful nature. And then 
on his way from running away from Nineveh, he kind of came to face his own sinful nature. I know. So, yep. That's it. Yeah. Anyway, do you have any thoughts of it? Well, I've seen a lot of people do that, you know, where some people say it, that they're Christians, that they believe in God. And that might be true that they do believe in God. But when, when it comes to like their final test and to see what they would do in that situation, they start to run away and not do what God wants them to do. But then eventually they'll realize that they have sinned and that they'll, and they'll give themselves up to the punishment that they deserve. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it can be easy to follow God until he tells you to go somewhere you don't want to go. Yes. So. Yep, that's very true. And, you know, the cool thing about Jonah, see, a lot of people think that Jonah now, like, had this change of heart, and he's now going to go to Nineveh and tell people about God and tell them that they're doing wrong. But really, Jonah's attitude never changes. No, he's really basically doesn't. like he goes into this fish he spends days in this fish and then he gets spat out in the shores of Nineveh and then he goes in there and he tells people about God and he doesn't think that they're going he in fact after he's done he goes up and he waits for the city to be destroyed because he knows there's no way and so Jonah just had a bad attitude and I think Jonah's life is a great example of how we shouldn't be honestly like we should be grateful. We should, when, when God is using us to do great things, even if it's something that we don't enjoy or it's something that maybe is challenging for us, like we need to do that and, and do that wholeheartedly and not have a, a bad or a sour attitude um, because it's maybe not exactly what we want um, to be doing. So, And that's kind of a hard message to hear too as well. And yeah. I think a lot of times with these, especially more popular Bible stories, right? We always kind of want to like, aspire to be like the main character, but this one, not particularly. Yep. No. So why no. is it important to listen to what God says? I think it's important to listen to what God says. Or to do what God says. Or to too. do what yeah. God says. Well, see, God is not going to, he doesn't have to use you. He really doesn't. He doesn't have to use you. God, God doesn't need you, but you need God. And so it's important to listen to what God says because God is trying to use you to further his kingdom. He maybe has opportunities for you Mm -hmm. um, to reach people. Like as Christians, it's our goal. You know, we want to go out into all nations and we want to preach the gospel and we want to share Jesus with people. And so if we choose not to listen to God, sometimes that can God will move on and he'll find someone else Mm -hmm. to use, right? He doesn't need us in particular, but he wants to use us. He wants us to be part of his plan. Yes, exactly. And so when when you feel a calling that God has for you, it's important that we listen to that. Because if we don't, if we're not willing to obey God, then why would God want to use us for things, right? Right. Mm -hmm. So I think it's important to listen to God because he has great things in store for you and he wants to use you, but it's up to us to say yes. Because if you don't, you're just going to miss out. And you're probably going to get eaten by a giant fish. Maybe not. (laughs) Maybe not exactly, but... But you will miss out, You will. You will definitely miss out on on the opportunities that God has for you. Uh, And so, yes, it's definitely important to, to listen to God. Now, if you don't want to miss out, you can pray something like, please, God, use me and explore the calling that he has for your life, right? And listening to what his word says and praying to him about these things. Abbott, do you have anything else before we move on to our application? Yeah, so I just thought of this. Um, The other day I was watching a movie. Um, There's this part where this guy, he is stuck on this, kind of cursed, nasty ship and that he has to stay on forever. And his son comes and he's going to trying to save his dad from this ship and free him. And he says, his dad says, he won't pick me. I wouldn't pick me. Now that's kind of, that's kind of a hard thing to say because then it's kind of showing that he knows what his punishment is for what he did in his lifetime. And he says that he, that he, it, isn't worth it to be picked, but God picks us because he wants us to be part of his plan. He wants us to be in heaven with him. Mm -hmm. And he doesn't pick us because we're worthy of his calling. He picks us because he wants to use us, right? Yep. And it's up to us to say yes to God, right? That's good. 
Wonderful. Okay. Are you guys ready to get wet? Uh, wait, hold on. So you what remember, is our application for today? You remember how they drew lots in the Bible? I think a lot of important decisions can come down to, to drawing lots or as it were, the short straw. Okay. Or the short eaten popsicle stick. Okay. Or the you only popsicle, popsicle stick. Okay. So what are we doing? Well, we got a tank of water in front of wait, us. Wait, one question. Yeah. You eat popsicle sticks? Ew, that's weird. Only like half of them before you're weird. The away. I don't actually eat popsicle sticks. <laughs> I didn't mean to say that, but what we're going to do. Hold on. Let me prep a little bit here. Okay. okay. I got three boats. Okay. Right? Because there's three of us. Yes. So I'm going to put. I call red. No, you have to close your eyes when you're actually drawing it. Okay. All right. So what we're going to do, I'm going to put, I'm going to put those in there. Okay. Right. Now I have this half of a popsicle stick. You can tell I ate the other half. Right. <laughs> <laughs> you can see, show it clearly to the camera. And I'm going to put it underneath one of these. Okay. Now we're going to have to close our eyes and I'm going to spin it around a little bit. Okay. We're going to swirl it around a little bit. Whoever draws this popsicle stick, they have to dunk their head in the water. Oh, I don't, don't think I can do wet. that. What if the water is cold? I don't well, care. Well, I'm definitely going to pick the right one, so. Well, I know I will too. So well, I guess I'm, you're gonna no, definitely I'm, get cold. I'm gonna pick the right one. All right, let's do this thing. You know what? Right. I think we should go till all of us get our our heads a little wet, because <laughs> I don't want to see anyone going home dry. All right, let's start this thing. All right, I love I love this. Okay, so I'm just gonna wait. Can I peek? That's fine. So okay. Gather around here. Okay. Okay. So I'm gonna kind of now everyone put your hands in the water. Close your eyes. Okay. I'm going to kind of just push the boats around a little bit. Okay. Okay, now put your hand on a boat. Where's my boat? I have a boat. You got a hand on a boat? I, I got a boat. My boat. Okay. My boat. Now make sure your hand's fully boat. around the boat and okay. flood out the water. Oh, no. I don't have anything. I have the red boat. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. You got to dunk your head in the water. Wait. Guys, you can do something else. No. Nope, nope. You got to dunk it in. Like my whole head? Whole head. Whole head. How, my head's bigger than the water. Yep, tank. you got to dunk it in. How am I going to... Just dunk it. Just dunk it. Just go for Can it. I take off my glasses? Sure. Okay, thank you. Three, two, one. <laughs> wow. Oh! <laughs> getting us wet. Yeah, that's I mean, not very nice. We're going to get wet anyways, so... All right, <laughs> Boats, boats back in the water. Speaking of water, I definitely got some up my nose. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I get to pick this time. Oh, I fell off. You got to pick last time, too. No, I did. How do you get this thing stable? You just kind of, like, put your hand fully around it and then put it in. Okay, everybody's hands in. Can I put, we'll dry off my face? Yes. Thank no. you. Conveniently, you use paper towels. Just appeared. Yeah. Okay. Just, hands in the clean. hands in the tank. And kind of spin them around. Don't let us just cheat a little bit. Oh, I'm sorry. I just lodged the popsicle stick. Ah, but you have it again. No, 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 no. Just okay, throw just it in a boat. In okay. Okay. Ready. I have my boat. Where's my mouse? Where's my mouse? I don't. And I didn't pick it. <laughs> Which means one of you guys. <laughs> Evan has it. I also didn't get it, by the way, which is already self-evident. Yeah, but you I'm have to dunk. Scared. I'm like, you have to dunk your head in the water. So. Well, I was the first one to get my head wet, so I was a little. Oh, uh -huh. excuses. Watch. And <sighs> All right, I'm watching. I think Jonah's excuses are a little better than mine. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Caleb, that's all the rounds. That's water. all the time we have. Uh, you're not going home dry. We already. That's all. Water the, this is pre-instated. That is all the time we have. <sighs> Sorry. Sorry. It's oh, not going to. All right. One last round. No, you don't get to pick which one it goes in. Okay, fine. Pick. I'll close my eyes. Yeah, you close your eyes. 
Caleb, do you think you can get your hand in the water with your eyes still closed? Yeah. Okay. Do you want to put your hand in the water with your eyes still closed? Yeah. All right. Everyone, put your hands in the water. Mine are in there. Find a boat. All right. Grab your boat. Well, mine's not. No! Woo! <laughs> 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 Caleb, oh. you know how you said earlier, you know how you said earlier you have a problem with lying? Yeah. I may have lied. What did you lie about? Neither of us we put our hands you. in the water we that didn't put time. Our hands in the water we the didn't even put time. in more than one boat. You were just the only option. <laughs> <laughs> That's not very nice. <laughs> it was kind of funny though. It was <gasps> kind of funny though. I'm a little bit chilly now, I'm not going to lie. Yeah. Well, you got a beanie. I know I had to put my beanie on because I was a little chilly. Get some. Oh, thank you very much. Get some dry on. Oh, I'm glad we didn't get our Bibles wet. All right, what's next? Mr. Pastor, sir? Yes. Do you want to pray us out? I would Reverend. love to pray. Oh. Reverend, sir. Reverend. I Reverend would love Pastor to. Pastor Caleb. I would love to pray us out. All right, let's pray. God, we thank you so much um, for just, we know that you can use us, right? We, You have great plans for us, and we pray that we'll be obedient to those plans. Um God, you, you don't need us, but you want to use us. And so, God, I pray that when we, uh, when we hear a plan that you have for us, that we will be obedient to that, that we will listen to you, that we, we won't be like Jonah where we'll try to run away from the plans that you have for us, but that we will, we will listen to you, we will obey you, and God, continue to give us amazing plans um, for us. And we pray this in your name. And everybody said? The end. Amen. Amen. <laughs> well, Amen. hey, thank you so much for having me on the podcast. And I look forward to coming back soon. Yeah? Yeah. Oh, if I get invited back. I don't know. You're a little bit reckless. <laughs> yeah, you're right. <laughs> okay. Bye. All right. All right. We'll see bye. you guys later. <laughs> Peace. Peace.